This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 442. The Importance of Variety by Ross Enemite of rosstraining.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your very own personal narrator. Welcome to a Tuesday edition of Optimal Health Daily. Remember, this is one of five podcasts where we read to you from blogs for free so that you don't have to read them yourself, except on Fridays. That's where I usually answer your questions. If you want your question answered, come by oldpodcast.com and submit your audio. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call in your question by dialing 61 I love ohd And as a bonus, when you call in a question, that enters you into small special raffles to win books on the first of every month. And the next raffle is in just five days. So now's a great time to send me a question. Plus, it makes me super happy. I love responding to your questions. So on yesterday's show, I was talking about having one rule and having a very specific, straightforward rule so that it kind of limits our choices. The benefit of limiting choices is that when you're stressed out after a long day, we know that your brain, my brain too, won't be able to think as clearly. And so if we can limit our choices and make a very clear statement about our behavior goals, fitness goals, nutrition goals, whatever, it makes it so that our brains don't have to think. We just look at our rule and go, great, I'm going to do that. But now what happens if you've been following that same rule for a while? Maybe that rule isn't as fun anymore. Maybe you've already reached your goal. So today, we're gonna talk about variety. So if that's your case where you've been following your rule for a long time, let's talk about incorporating some variety. So let's jump right in, hear today's post about variety and start optimizing your life. The Importance of Variety by Ross Enemite of rosstraining.com. Variety is defined as the quality or state of having different forms or types. Variety can be important within a strength and conditioning program. Athletes involved in multifaceted events have a need for variety as they must develop multiple physical qualities. Think of the combat athlete as the perfect example. It is not enough to be strong if one lacks endurance. It is not enough to be fast if one lacks power. The fighter who is well-rounded is often the fighter who excels. Unfortunately, many trainers and athletes follow a narrow-minded approach to fitness. These individuals select a sole training modality. They reap the benefits of one style while ignoring and often discrediting the effectiveness of all others. Consider the common argument about body weight exercise and weight training. One individual may boast superiority based on his ability to perform 20 pull-ups and 100 push-ups. Another individual may claim superiority based on his barbell squat and bench press abilities. So who is the superior athlete? To those expecting an answer, unfortunately, I cannot provide one. There is no correct answer. An athlete is not defined by his ability to perform a certain number of repetitions or by how much weight he can lift. Athletes must be evaluated and judged based on performance. There is no training device or system that serves as a panacea for strength and conditioning. Too many individuals spend excessive amounts of time trying to justify their training system while discrediting others. These individuals will be better served by incorporating variety into their program. Who is to say that body weight exercise is superior to weight training or vice versa? Who is to say that kettlebells are superior to dumbbells or vice versa? What about sandbags, medicine balls, or club bells? What about sports-specific skill training? We are all individuals each with unique strengths, weaknesses, goals, and objectives. No one should preach the absolute superiority of one particular training system, device, or methodology. I prefer and recommend a system that incorporates variety. Regardless of your goals and desires, you will be well served with variety. I personally train with barbells, dumbbells, body weight exercises, medicine balls, sandbags, sledgehammers, sprints, intervals, and more. Each tool and system can provide benefits if used correctly. The athlete must incorporate variety into his program to become complete. There is no single exercise or piece of equipment that will create a complete athlete. It is unfortunate that so many individuals fail to include variety into their exercise routine. These individuals continue to train the same way day after day, week after week. Their results are limited due to the natural process of habituation. As related to strength and conditioning, Habituation is defined as tolerance to the effects of a particular activity acquired through continued use. When you train the same way continuously, 
your body adapts and adjusts to that load that is placed against it. In order for a muscle to increase in strength, the workload must be greater than normal. By overloading the muscle, your body responds and adapts by growing stronger. Once the body adapts, a new stimulus is required to continue the reaction. If the workload does not progressively increase, there will be no further gains in strength and endurance. By incorporating variety, you have many tools and systems available to foster progression. Consider the martial artist who refuses to train with weights. This individual boasts his ability to perform 500 body weight squats. This accomplishment is impressive, especially from a strength endurance perspective. But what happens when he attempts to squat with 300 pounds on his back, which is more of a test of maximal strength? If this individual has not squatted with heavy weights, there is a good chance that he will be sent crashing to the floor, unable to handle the weight. What about the individual who routinely squats 300 pounds? What happens when he attempts to perform a one-legged squat with his non-working leg extended in front of his body? He may struggle to perform one rep. Perhaps he lacks the balance, coordination, and flexibility to perform this movement. Each of these individuals assumes they are strong but they are narrow-minded in their approach to strength and conditioning. A complete athlete will train with a complete program. This individual will be proficient with his own body weight as well as added resistance. Today's combative athlete must advance with the times. He must not limit him or herself to one training system, completely ignoring all others. Combat athletes should follow an integrated approach to strength and conditioning. I often compare a complete training program to a cooking recipe. There are several training ingredients that must be included. The combat athlete must first focus on developing and advancing his current skill set. Boxing, wrestling, and MMA are skill sports. Without skill, the athlete will have no avenue to deliver his strength and conditioning. In addition to skill training, the athlete must condition himself to apply his skill. Common conditioning methods include interval training, heavy bag training, non-weighted GPP or general physical preparation, swinging a sledgehammer, and more. Common GPP exercises include burpees, jumping jacks, split jumps, mountain climbers, push-ups, and bodyweight squats. Another important ingredient is strength training. Combative athletes should incorporate variety into their strength training program by working with barbells, dumbbells, sandbags, bodyweight exercises, etc. Variety will expedite training results while providing an avenue for continued progression. So how do you find time for each training device? The answer is simple. You cannot work with each training device during one session. Incorporating variety within the plan is often much more subtle. Examples include altering exercise selection, working with a different variation of a similar exercise. For example, doing pull-ups versus doing chin-ups, or doing bench presses versus doing floor presses, etc. You can also add weight modify your repetition scheme, and train with different tools. For example, use barbells instead of dumbbells or vice versa. For example, you can develop a solid foundation by training with weights and body weight exercise. Then eventually, you can supplement your workouts with various odd objects like sandbags, kegs, heavy tires, sledgehammers, etc. Using myself as an example, let's take a step back in time and look at a sample week from the summer of 2004. Monday. Strength work with dumbbells, sandbags, and body weight exercise. Tuesday, plyometric work with the medicine ball, body weight variations, and sledgehammer training. Wednesday, energy system conditioning, along with body weight exercise. Thursday, strength work with dumbbells, sandbags, and body weight exercise. Friday, plyometric work with the medicine ball, body weight variations, and sledgehammer training. Saturday, energy system conditioning along with body weight exercise. Sunday, rest. On Monday and Thursday, I focus on strength training. I integrate dumbbell training with sandbags and body weight exercise. I focus on full body movements, such as dumbbell swings, snatches, overhead lifts, heavy rows, one-legged squats, handstand push-ups, and a variety of sandbag power lifts. On Tuesday and Friday, I integrate a variety of medicine ball drills with explosive body weight movements. I also train with the sledgehammer. I work through a variety of conditioning drills by smashing the sledgehammer against a large truck tire. Wednesday and Saturday are reserved for my most intense conditioning sessions. These days include interval training on the track, hill sprints, sled dragging, and a variety of other conditioning drills. In addition to the schedule I just listed, 
I train at the boxing gym during the evenings. The boxing workout includes skill training, sparring, core training, and more conditioning drills. As you can see, there is not one training style that I single out over all the others. Instead, I'm able to reap the benefits of an integrated training program. The program is constantly changing to prevent habituation. I continue to attack and target the muscles from different angles with different movements. Be wary of those fitness gurus who recommend one training device over all others. There is a good chance that the individual has a financial interest in the training tool or system. Do not allow one's marketing speech to deter you from incorporating variety into your training routine. Mix it up, incorporate variety, and have fun. You just listened to the post titled The Importance of Variety by Ross Enemite of rosstraining.com. One of the most common questions I get from my students when we talk about exercise and exercise physiology is, does blank fill in the workout here really work? So for example, students will ask me, does P90X really work? Or does CrossFit really work? Or does yoga really work? You get the idea. Can you guess what my answer is? They all work. Why? They all work if you're able to stick to it. If you enjoy P90X, you will find it quote unquote works for you. And of course, we go on a little tangent about what does work really mean? Are we talking about specific goals? That's how we know if something really works, right? If you love doing CrossFit or yoga or whatever, yes, quote unquote, they will work. And again, that's only because you go back. You're consistent with it because you kind of sort of enjoy it. So all workout routines have the potential to help you reach your goals. Now, the other day, one of my students came up to me and he says that he does the 300 workout a lot. For those of you that aren't familiar, this workout was inspired by the film 300. And supposedly the trainer, Mark Twight, would have the actors do this workout where you do basically 50 reps of six different exercises. So 50 reps times six equals 300 repetitions total. Hence the title of the workout, 300. So going back to my student, he said he likes to perform that workout a lot, but he was complaining because he wasn't seeing any real changes in his muscle mass. The problem is, I told him, is that your body has adapted to it or has habituated to it as Ross mentioned in his post. You've got to vary the routine somehow. You've got to do something different to trigger your muscles to grow. So if you're working out consistently, if you found something you like doing, like yoga, Pilates, CrossFit, P90X, whatever, Just be sure you throw in some variety here and there so that you force your body, you force your muscles to have to adapt. And that's when you'll start to see new gains. Once again, before I go, if you wanna possibly hear your question being answered right here on the show, plus be in special bonus raffles, the next one is in just five days, come by oldpodcast.com to submit your audio. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call in your question. The number is 61 I love OHD. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a subscriber to the show. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.